Here we have a triangular prism formed by the plane x equals 3, the plane x equals 0, the plane y equals 0, the plane z equals 0, and finally we have this slanted plane here which has equation y plus z equals 1. We saw in a previous video that to get the volume of a region we have to integrate this function over the region. This is the constant function 1. So for each point x, y, z in the region the value of the function is a constant and it's equal to 1. For each point in the region we multiply 1 by a volume element. Well we saw before that a volume element has volume dx, dy, dz. It's a tiny cuboid and we need to sum all those cuboids over the entire region. So we're dealing with a three-dimensional region that's why we have a triple integral. So that's why we our function has to be 1 because 1 times that volume just gives us that volume. So we could leave out that 1 but Actually, I'll, I'll put it back in again because it's easier to see what's going on. So, here is one particular approach to this problem. The innermost integral is an integral with respect to x. Basically, in terms of geometry, this integral gives us the length of a line that's in the back face of this prism. You see, we are integrating with respect to x. So all that changes as we move from here to here is x. y and z remain constant. y is always 0 for um, lines in this back plane because its equation is y equals 0 as we saw. Um, z is constant for this particular line. Okay, The z value of this point is the same as the z value of this point so I've chosen this line to be parallel to the x-axis. Okay, so we are integrating our function, which is 1, over this line. Of course, that's not enough. We have to integrate the function over the entire region. But we can start off with this line, and then we can consider a plane. And from the plane, we can get, finally, the integral of f equals 1 over the entire region. And that'll be the volume of the region. If we integrate 1 with respect to x, we do, of course, get 1x. And if we apply our limits from 0 to 3, we find that the inner integral is equal to 3. And that's nothing other than the length of this line. Now it happens to be co constant for all lines in um, this plane of the surface. Okay, But in general, of course, it won't be constant. Just this in this particular example, it's constant because we have this rectangular region. Now, the next integral is an integral with, with respect to y. So that tells us that we have to consider a plane that's parallel to the xy plane. Okay, so um, we are taking the result of the previous part. We've got the length of this line. And, uh, you know, we are integrating with respect to y. So we're integrating in the y direction. So that'll give us the area of this cross section here. So this is a horizontal cross section of our prism. And you can see that this horizontal cross section is not constant because, you know, I could have chosen a different line down here. Its length will still be 3, of course. The length of the line is constant, but the cross section formed the horizontal cross section form depends on where we take the cut okay so we'll have a different area here so this certainly won't be constant so to integrate over this region here we have to get the coordinates of this point well we can see that x is zero for this point because this is a point in the yz plane now y is not zero I'll leave that for a second. Uh, Z hasn't changed. Z is the same. So you can see that 
y is what changes as we move from this point to this point here. So how do we get the y value of this point? Well this is a point in this slanted plane here so it's got to satisfy the equation y plus z equals 1. So if we make y the subject of this we get y equals 1 minus z. So we have to integrate from y equals 0 to y equals 1 minus z. So we are integrating with respect to y. We're moving in the y direction. So we can imagine taking this line here and uh, moving it directly across until we have it at this end and we want to get the area swept out. So this is our second integral. So we have to integrate 3 with respect to y. Well that gives us 3y and our limits are from y equals 0 to y equals 1 minus z. So we plug 1 minus z in for y and we get 3 times 1 minus z and we have a minus sign we plug 0 in. Well we just get 0 there. So we end up with this result here. So this here is actually the area of a horizontal plane that, uh, well a horizontal cross section of our prism. You can see that it's obviously not constant, it depends on what z is. So well, it depends exclusively on z, actually. So you can guess what needs to be done now. We have to sum the areas of all these planes from z equals 0 to z equals 1. So, you know, we can consider infinitely many horizontal cross-sections. We can consider the areas of them. And if we sum all of them from this point up to this point, so we're going in the z direction, so we have to integrate with respect to z from z equals 0 to z equals 1. So after we've done that, we will have the volume of the entire region. So if we integrate 3 with respect to z, we get 3z. Integrating minus 3z with respect to z gives us minus 3 halves z squared. We plug in our limits, plug 1 in. We get 3 minus 3 halves minus uh, 0. So our answer is 1.5. Now we could have got the volume of this prism without doing any integration. We can see that the base of this right angle triangle is 1. The perpendicular height of it is also 1. So the area of a vertical cross section is a half the base by the height. Half times 1 times 1. Which is a half. And we multiply the area of the cross section by the length of the prism, which is 3. So the volume is a half times 3, which is 3 halves as we saw. Now we are going to change the order of integration. So now the first integral is with respect to dy. Geometrically that will give us the length of a line um, from the z-axis to a point on this line here. You can see that depends on where I pick the point. But it's going to be a horizontal line. So the only thing that changes as we move along this line here is y, and that's important because we are integrating with respect to y. So that's why it has to be a horizontal line. If we have a line like this, well, if we move along this line, both y and z change. Okay, we, do, we only want y to change. So this is any point on this part of the z-axis. So z varies, but both x and y are zero. Now what about this point? Well, we want the x value of this point to be 0. Now, what about the y value? Well, we want it to be a point on this line here. So y is equal to 1 minus z. What about the z value? Well, we want the z value of this point to be the same as the z value of this point because it's a horizontal line. So, the lower limit is 0 and the upper limit is 1 minus z. You see we cannot just write y here um, you know because then we could be integrating as far as any point you know on a horizontal line starting at this point. So we have to allow for the fact that the end point is a point on this line or if you like on this plane so we are constrained by this plane, so we have to use this information here. Okay, so we are integrating 1 along this line here. If we integrate 1 with respect to y, we get y. Uh, we apply our limits, 
So we plug 1 minus z in for y, that just gives us 1 minus z, and we have a minus sign plug 0 in. So we end up with just 1 minus z. That's actually the length of this line here. As I said earlier, that's not a constant. That length depends on z, because I could have chosen this line down here, which is longer, or this one up here, which is shorter. Now the next integral is an integral with respect to z. So that means that, that um, we are talking about changes that are entirely in the z direction. So it looks like we are going to be getting the area of this region. So we are going to be integrating 1 minus z with respect to z. In other words, we are going to be summing all of these lines, summing the lengths of all of these lines. Well, that, that just gives us the area, the, um, the vertical cross-section of the prism. And we are summing from z equals 0 to z equals 1. Summing or integrating from z equals 0 to z equals 1. So again, we are moving entirely in the z direction. So that's, we get that from the fact that we are integrating with respect to z. So you can imagine one of these horizontal lines moving vertically up or down, remains parallel to itself, will sweep out the area of this triangle. By the way, we don't have to be dealing with this particular triangle at the end of the prism. We could have been talking about a different cross-section in general, of course, the cross-section will vary, but in this particular case, the cross-section is constant. So when we do this integral, we will get a constant answer, because the cross-section is the same everywhere for this prism. So, to get back to the integral, straightforward integral, if we integrate 1 minus z with respect to z, we get z minus z squared over 2, apply our limits, plug the upper limit 1 in, and uh, we get 1 minus a half, which is a half. So that's the area of that triangle. Now finally, we are integrating with respect to x. So, so let's see geometrically what's going on there. Well, it should be clear now that to get the volume of the region, we have to imagine summing the areas of all the triangles, all the vertical cross-sections. If we sum all those areas, we'll have the volume of the region. So we are moving in the x direction. We are integrating with respect to x, and we can easily see what the limits are. We are integrating from x equals 0 to x equals 3. Okay, so we're integrating along this, this line here, except we're not um, integrating 1 over the this line. We're integrating the area of a triangle. So this is a very simple integral. Integrate a constant with respect to x, we get the constant times x, a half x. Plug in 3 and we end up with 3 over 2. Actually all we're doing is multiplying 3 by a half. You know, we're multiplying the cross-sectional area, which is 3 by the... or sorry, which is a half by the length of the prism, which is 3. 